3,500 people interviewed, 200 suspects and 14 arrests and the killer is still out there. Today we are going to talk about the murder of Rainin Murray. Hi everyone, I'm Tara, the host of the Darkest Word podcast and today I'm going to set the scene for you. This case takes place in Dublin, Ireland, 1999. Rainin Murray was born on the 1st of January 1982 to parents Jim and Deirdre Murray. She lived in Glenagarry in the south of Dublin. She was the youngest of the family with an older brother and an older sister. Raynard and Ted and St. Joseph of Cluny Secondary School in Killiney where she was a gifted student who achieved highly in her junior certificate before completing her Leaving Cert exam in June of 1999. When she finished school she worked part-time in a boutique in Dunleary Shopping Centre but had intended to reset her leaving search at the Institute of Education and hoped to attend the Arts Faculty in University College Dublin upon completion. She liked reading and poetry, with her favourite play being Under Milk Wood by Dylan Thomas, and hoped to one day be a success as a professional writer. She was known for dressing in bright colours and pursued a very active social life. On the evening of the 3rd of September 1999, Rain had spent the evening socialising in Scott's pub on George's Street, a place that she knew well. She had just finished her shift at the boutique at 9 o'clock. It was the bead last place where she was last seen alive. She left at approximately 11.20pm, planning to meet friends again later, and started the 15 minute walk home. It is believed that she argued with a man described as being in his mid-twenties, an estimated 25 minutes after leaving the pub in the laneway between Silchester Road and her home in Silchester Park. Witnesses heard a female voice expressing a cry of Leave me alone. Go away. This was followed by a scream. Raynard was stabbed four times in the side, chest and shoulder with a one and a half inch sharp knife while in Silchester Crescent. Her murderer escaped and Raynard staggered 200 feet before she collapsed and died from her injuries. Her body would be found by her sister Sarah 50 yards from her home at 12.20am on the morning of Saturday 4th of September. Raynard was not sexually assaulted, nor were her possessions stolen. At the peak of its case, more than 100 Gardaí were assigned to the case. For anybody that's listening outside of Ireland, on Gardaí Síochána is the police force. By 2008, more than 8,000 people were interviewed and almost 3,000 statements taken. There were 12 arrests and the knife used to murder Raynard has never been found. In the build-up to the first year anniversary of Raynard's murder in 2000, there were fresh appeals for information by Garda and Detective Inspector Eamon O'Reilly. Each year, Raynard's family issue an appeal for more information. They have offered an award of 190,000. These appeals for information have been renewed, particularly with authorities suspecting that any young people who may have witnessed the crime may now have reached the correct level of maturity to discuss what they saw. In 2009, on the 10th anniversary of Raynard's murder, Gardy issued descriptions of a male and a female who they wanted to interview on the matter. Interestingly enough, police also issued a profile of the killer. A forensic profile suggested that it might be a young man in his mid to late twenties, single, living either alone or with his mother. He would have been a loner, possibly with a drug problem, and may have been in psychiatric care at some point. He would also have had a history of antisocial behaviour and would be unlikely to have had any intimate relationships. The profile indicated a likelihood he would kill again. There have been many suspects for the murder since it took place and yet none have seemed to pan out. I'm going to talk a little about the suspects that police investigated in the early stages of the investigation. The earliest suspect was a man in his mid-twenties, five foot ten in height with sandy coloured hair. He was wearing light coloured combat trousers and a beige top seen arguing with her less than an hour before she was killed. A taxi driver reported picking up a young man with blood on his trousers in the early hours of the Saturday morning that Raynard was murdered and taking him to Granville Road at the top of Newtown Park Avenue, Black Rock. He dropped the man at a house and felt he did not see him go inside. House-to-house inquiries were carried out at the time, but nothing was found fitting that description. 
Later in the investigation, a suspect was found to have been living at the time on the other side of Avenue. He was arrested and questioned, but there was no evidence. A cook was arrested and questioned, but later released without charge. His name has never been released. A young man seen dancing with Raynard at nightclub and then hassling her in a fast food restaurant on the 29th of July, 1999. His name has not been released. Faris Wallenor, who was a Kenyan immigrant who was killed and dismembered in March 2005 by Linda and Charlotte Mohal, known as the Scissor Sisters, from Dublin. He allegedly threatened their mother, Kathleen, saying, I'm going to kill you, just like I did with Raynard Murray, although he was allegedly drunk at the time. Nor, who was questioned during the initial investigation, has since been ruled out. Gardy believed he claimed responsibility to upset them. A unit of experienced Gardy called the Garda Serious Crime Review Team under Detective Superintendent Christy Mangan began a review of the case in July 2008. They identified a n- number of mistakes and oversights in the original investigation. It recommended renewed searches for the murder weapon and found areas of fallings. It determined that some potential witnesses who came forward with information at the time were followed up on incorrectly. There was tension between Gardy units during the original investigation, which meant that communication was not as effective as it could have been. Irregularities in a statement by one witness included an allegation of forgery, which was referred to the Garda Shia Khan Ombudsman Commission. The review team suggested new theories on the case. It was not the work of a random killer that Raynard knew her killer as there was no record of a similar attack happening before or after this particular crime anywhere in the Dublin region. The nature of the attack would suggest that whoever killed the victim had some sort of personal grudge. It was suggested that Raynard was killed by a female. The woman may have been known to her and she was killed after a personal disagreement causing the schoolgirl to break off contact. They identified a woman in her authorities who had a reputation for violence against women. She left the country a year after the murder and still lives abroad. I want to talk a little more about the theory that a woman had killed Raynett and why I think it was plausible. I read on the Washington Post where there was an article about women who kill that women are more likely to kill in a jealous rage. I mean, the way that Raynard was murdered, it seemed so personal, so savage. Something, I think, a woman in a jealous rage could be capable of. Every year on the anniversary of her death, Raynard's family released a new appeal, pleading for answers on who killed their daughter and sister. Jim Murray is quoted as saying, it's 20 years since Raynard was murdered, but to us her awful death is still vivid in our minds and we feel the pain of her loss every day. We feel that the memory of that time will still be vivid for others as well. The Gardaí have assured us of their continuing commitment to bring Raynard's killer to justice, but they need your help. Our beautiful child died on the pavement with no loving, caring person there to help her, comfort her. Raynard's killer is free. That freedom mocks what should have been Raynard's life and mocks the horror of her death. To her killer we say, come out from the shadows and own up to what you have done. Do the right thing and confess your crime. Since her death, there have been 200 suspects, 14 arrests have been made in relation to the case, 11 in relation to the murder and 3 for withholding information in relation to the case. If any person has any information which could assist in identifying a motive or a suspect for the murder of Raynett, or if anyone has any doubts about the veracity of an alibi provided, we would appeal for your immediate assistance. You may be unknowingly shielding a killer. Anyone with information is urged to contact the Garda Incident Room at Dunleary Garda Station, the Garda Confidential Line or any Garda Station. A reward for critical information received is available from Crime Stoppers. Free phone 1800 25 Raynard was only 17 when she was brutally murdered and taken from her family. Her life was cut too short and I have no doubt in my mind 
that she would have went on to do amazing things. And because of one person, her family will never get to witness that. If you have any information about the murder of Raymond Murray, please come forward. Give her family some closure and give Raina the justice that she deserves. Thank you for listening and I'll see you on the next episode.